If you cannot control your own mind, then you are just a feather in the wind of life because your own mind is the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather. Right. You can't control other people. You can't even control whether your heart stops beating. You might have a heart attack tomorrow. You can't control anything besides what you think. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control, zero influence. You can't control anything. You're just a feather in the wind waiting for life to blow you from happy place to sad place to happy place to sad place, completely hoping on the gods to be fortunate to you because if any genuine discomfort comes your way, you're fucked. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, everyone agrees. They go, yeah, that's probably true. And then they continue to hang around with people who they don't want to be. Why? Like, you have, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I'm on a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. And that self-consciousness would motivate you or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change. You don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers. That's why you don't change. That's life. That's humanity. So I say this to people all the time. If you know you're the sum of the five people you hang around with, why are you hang around with people you don't want to be? The world has become ex exceptionally easy for a lot of men. It used to be a diff different place. Most men were cabin fodder. Most of us would have ended up in wars dying for fucking no reason. Damn. Now we don't have to do that. So because we don't have to do that, men think it's okay to just become comfortable now. You don't, you're not supposed to be comfortable. You were never evolved to be comfortable. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. Right. And if you find make yourself uncomfortable constructively, it's very easy to be anything you want. And it's in life you get one shot. Damn, that's but if you get some ball, that's what life is as a game. That's what life is as a man. This is one big video game. You get to upgrade your character. You're not born with any value. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. You have to get up and do it. Just like a video game, you start with fucking zero. You have to decide if you want to complete it. You have to upgrade your character. So I find it amazing that men are going to play video games and fuck about and waste their time instead of upgrading their character. Everyone knows what to do. You know what you have to do. Right. If you had to become the most dangerous, intelligent, respectable man on the planet, you know you're supposed to go to the gym. You know you're supposed to train, learn how to fight. You know you know all these things. You don't do them. That's your that's your decision. It's your prerogative. I didn't I didn't make that choice. I made the choice to do it all. I decided all. And every single man watching this can do the exact same thing. The lions that you see on TV, they weren't just born big lions. They had to fight other lions. They had to fight to get that antelope. They had to fight other animals, hyenas, jackals. They had to fight to be the boss. We're living in a comfortable world now where people think, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But you know what? To some degree, it does matter. It does matter, and I'll tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul, and it matters to God. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. Start to work. Start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you become. You loathe your own weakness. You loathe your own laziness. This is what all of these things are. I don't feel depression. How can I feel depression when I'm the most powerful version of me that I could ever fucking be? The most important thing, obviously, regarding anything you do in your life is your mindset. We're going to learn something about ourselves. We're going to learn something about how, we, how do you view the world. How you view the world absolutely and utterly shapes how you react in the world, how you act in the world, how people view you. It's all down to how you view things. There's very few things in this life we actually have any control over. I've lived an extreme life, more extreme than most. I've been a multimillionaire. I've been a nobody. I've been uh, famous. I've been a world level athlete. I've, I've started from nothing with a point where I had to run to the gym because I didn't even have a car to get there. I've done it all. So I've, 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 I've lived a very extreme life and this is where these lessons come from. I told everyone I'm going to be world champion years before I even had a British title, before I even had an English title. I just started fighting. I was like, oh, I'm the next world champion. Yeah, yeah. And just, just, I just started saying it, but I said it with genuine conviction. I knew I would be the best. Good shot there from Tate. He did save what the a, second round. Superb. And what a crunching shot. You have to understand that this world, everyone constantly tells you, do not be arrogant. Do not have an ego. People will constantly tell you to not talk in a way which is full of conviction. If people do not like you to have, be arrogant and have an ego. This is the worst thing ever. Let me tell you a fact, number one facet of a G mindset. Your life is never gonna be worse if you walk through the world believing you are the fucking man. And I believe that. I don't just say these things, I fucking believe them. And when you go through life believing you really, really are the man, you're gonna lose a few loser friends. Who cares? What you are gonna gain is other people on the same path. You're gonna gain other people who think, yeah, well, I'm the fucking man too. This guy's the man, let's make some money. That's what's gonna happen. You need to start believing. 
you are the fucking man. Even if you're not the man yet, even before I was world champion, I knew I was going to be the man. So I don't give a fuck. And I was happy to say that to anybody. When people called me arrogant and stupid and deluded, I just sit there and look at them and say, yeah, fuck you, I'm going to be the man. G mindset. First thing you have to believe you're the fucking man, you can achieve anything. I'm not saying you can achieve anything easily. I'm not saying it's not going to take a whole bunch of work. I'm not saying it's going to happen quickly. But you have to believe you can achieve anything. I'll tell you something now. I don't give a fuck to be an astronaut. I don't care about climbing Mount Everest. You give me enough time to train, I will get it done. I know that for a fact. I know who I am as a man. You need to be perspicacious. You need to understand that in this world, there's a whole bunch of people doing amazing shit that you are not doing. And that needs to piss you off. Because if it pisses you off, you become motivated by this. I was the only one who was pissed off when that Aston Martin was next to me and had my sales job. I was the only one who was pissed off when I saw that Ferrari drive past. Other people were not annoyed by it. And they're not annoyed by it. They're not driven to be it. You understand they're not driven to be where that person was. I'm telling you to be angry. Anger is a fantastic force. You're a fucking man. You're a full grown man. It's perfectly fine for you to do this stuff. It's perfectly fine for you to look around in your life, look at the girl you're fucking, look at the house you live in, look at the car you drive, and get pissed off. And go, you know what? I want a hotter bitch. I want a fucking nicer house. I want a faster car. There's nothing wrong if you take that anger and you direct it in the correct direction. This is the reason I stopped fighting now. People go, why do you stop fighting us? Because I fought. And I went through hell to get everything I now have. I had nothing when I fought. I had nothing. And I wanted the life I now have. Now I wake up in one of my three mansions with one of my seven supercars and one of my 15 women. What do I need to fight for? Like people have different motivations for different things. There's some fighters out there who fight for other reasons, you know? But my motivation was I was pissed off at the world. Look around you. And you don't own the home you're in, get pissed off. If there ain't a Ferrari on your drive, get pissed off. If you don't have 10 Playboy Bunny level beauties, get pissed off. You need to sit there and realize, whoa, 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 whoa. I have a few years of consciousness, and even less than that, I have a few short years as a young man, because age will damage you. I mean, if you're a millionaire when you're 60, it's not nearly as good as being a millionaire at my age. You need to realize you've got a few short years as a young man, you're fucking wasting it. You need to sit there and go, fuck, shit, get angry, because getting angry Forced, directed anger is an extremely powerful force. Nobody, absolutely nobody, gives a fuck about you as much as you're going to have to give a fuck about yourself. Nobody cares about you as much as they need to care to fix your life. You are never going to have any of the things you want if you do not get them yourself. The only person who gives a shit about your life truly is you. And if you don't give a shit, then you're fucked. You have to understand you are out here alone, absolutely alone. When you understand these three things, you start to see how a mindset comes together. Nobody's going to save you. You're fucked. It's totally down to you. You're pissed off with your current situation and you want to change it. Plus, you believe you can do absolutely anything. This is how I thought at 18 years old. This is how I achieved so much in the short years. This is how I went from a nobody to a world-level athlete and a multimillionaire. Because at a very young age, when I had my prime resource of energy and power at 18, 19 years old, I understood those three tenets. I believe I can do anything. I'm pissed off I don't have the life I want. And nobody else is gonna give it to me. These are three things you need to understand. If any one of these elements is missing, you'll never have the right mindset. The G mindset will never formulate if any one of these elements is missing. All three are absolutely essential. And the sooner you get your act together, the sooner you start to panic and worry and be concerned that you're 24, 25, you're not fucking rich yet. There's 24 and 25 year olds out there who are multimillionaires fucking the hot models. These Instagram girls with 3 million followers, they're getting dicked by someone and it ain't you. And that needs to piss you off. You need to get concerned, you need to get worried, you need to, shit, I'm running out of time. You need to get some urgency in your life. So I became a sayer. So my brother used to become a sayer. And what that means is I made a pact to him that my word was unbreakable, strength and honor. And that if I said something, I meant it. So I'd wake up in the morning and I'd say to my brother, I'm doing a thousand press-ups today. Once I said it, once I spoke it, it's like, like a genie, it became true. If I said I was gonna do a thousand press-ups, I'd do them. Because if I didn't do them, I'd feel guilty within myself that I was the kind of person who talks shit. Because when you instill these mindsets, when, you're, when your mindset changes, you start to be extremely accountable for yourself. No one's coming to save you. You become extremely accountable. So when you realize that, your word is one of the few things you have on this planet. If you say things, you're going to start sticking to them. So then it becomes very easy to train. You say, I'm going to train every day this week. I'm going to train for two hours a day. As soon as you set it, it's basically done. If I say something, it's basically done. It's, it's set in stone. And this is another thing you don't understand. If 
be very, very specific with what you say. Because if you can steal your mindset correctly and you start to just say things, just start saying things. Then you hold yourself accountable. Say things you don't even think you want to do. Wake up and go up to your friend or your mom or whoever and say, you know what? I'm going to do a thousand push-ups. Say it to people. And they're going to say, no, you're not. So watch me. And then you have a choice. You're either going to succeed like a G or you're going to be a little pussy. And you're going to quit 310 because it's hard. What kind of man are you? That's a decision you need. This is another facet of the G mindset. The word has to be iron, unbreakable. You have to start meaning every word you speak. You say to someone, I'm gonna get rich. You better fucking do it. Otherwise you're a liar. You're a liar and you're a little bitch. You say, I'm gonna put some muscle on, you better fucking do it. You say, I'm gonna lift this weight, you better fucking do it. 99% of the people out here talk shit. They say things they half mean or things they don't mean. If I say something, I fucking mean it. Once you implement that correctly, you get the ability to motivate yourself to no end. You get unlimited motivation because all you have to do is find the energy to say it. It's literally that easy. This is the fourth tenet and one of the most important ones because that is the power to unlimited motivation. And that's the power to being taken seriously across all spheres of your life. Be specific with your language. Sound like simple things, but to implement them correctly, truly and correctly in your mind will change your entire view of the world. When you implement these four things correctly, when you say, if I say something, I'm going to do it, my word is iron willed. When you say that nobody is ever coming to save me ever. And you say that I'm pissed off, I don't have the life I want to have. And you couple that with, I believe I can do anything. If you truly believe all of these four things, it's gonna change your entire view of this planet. When my, from my most famous tweets, when I said depression wasn't real, I was having arguments with all these people and everyone's telling me how, how dangerous my mindset is. What is dangerous about believing that you control your own mind? You need to live like God is always watching. You may wow. have the opportunity to do something bad or you may have the opportunity to steal some money or snake somebody, but in the end, you're gonna pay for that and the bill will be paid. Mm -hmm. I think if you do the right thing, in my experience, if you're a person who does the right thing, firm handshake, is on time, doesn't lie to anybody, does what he's supposed to do, is honest with a good heart, is genuinely polite to everyone he meets. If you are that person, you get very far in life. I have ne I've yet to meet people who just do all the simple things right, who completely fail at life. But I've met a lot of people who snake or steal some money and they get really rich, then they lose it all, or they get rich and end up a gambling addict or depressed or etc. So you have to just understand that God is always watching. He's going to reward you in the end. That's the first thing. And the second thing I will say is that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with and you need to create your reality. I think the biggest problem with young people today is that they don't create their realities heavily enough. The people that they want to spend most time with aren't adding any value to their lives and then they end up wondering why they don't get you. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, everyone agrees. They go, yeah, that's probably true. The, people, the five people you spend the most time with, that's what you're going to end up like. They say, yeah, that's true. And then they continue to hang around with people who they don't want to be. Why? You have, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, etc., etc. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I'm on a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. If you were to come hang out with me and you were in a room with me and my five friends, you'd feel, you'd feel self-conscious. Right. You don't feel so with your friends. If you were to come hang around with me and my crew, you would be self-conscious. And that self-consciousness would motivate you or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change. You don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers. That's why you don't change. If you were to get in a room and you're the only person who ain't a fucking monster, you'd want to become a monster. If you walk through life and feel like you're coming through here, if you wake up each day and go, I don't owe anybody anything. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Then you are a loser because you are absolutely not being correct. You must prove yourself to other people. You must prove yourself to your bloodline. And you must prove yourself to God. God hates the lazy. He can't stand them. If he gives you all these genetic dispositions and these natural God-given gifts, if you have two arms and two legs and you can think and you're not trying your absolute best, that's the reason you're not lucky. He doesn't like you. He likes the people which show him the beauty of his own creation. He likes to give somebody building blocks and then to build something amazing. It's the best thing about being a man, you have to build who you are. God loves to see that. Those people, for some reason, seem to be enormously lucky, right? The person who goes, I don't have to prove anything to God, I don't owe all of my ancestors any effort. You know, for 5,000 years, people were dodging saber-toothed tigers and catching the plague and running from Genghis Khan just for my stupid ass to be born. I don't owe them anything. I don't owe them a thing because I want to play video games. These people are losers. You should if walk I walk through Earth, as I walked into this hotel, you're forced every side of you. Not because they know who I am, but because as I move, even if, even if it's behind their head, 
people feel something. It's, it's an energy that comes from brutal competence. That's what happens when a predator walks in a room. You pay attention next time you're in a restaurant. If a man who's truly dangerous walks in, nearly every other man kind of looks up at the same time. Feel it. You need to or you don't survive. We've evolved with that to live. That's who I am. I couldn't imagine not being that man. I've done that because I've been trying to prove myself to my lineage my entire life. I wake up every day with something to prove. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. I wake up a day more. I'm in fantastic shape, four times world champion. Fighting the matrix out here by myself, more. I will have to be braver, I must try harder. All I do is prove myself. So when I hear people go, I don't have nothing to prove, then you're a loser. Peasants have never felt like they needed to prove anything, but kings felt like they needed to go and conquer land. Isn't that co it's coincidental that the king who already had it all felt like he needed to go to some far flung land and conquer it and take it and prove he's the king. But the peasants, oh, I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. You're a loser, man. You're a dummy. I absolutely and utterly completely have everything to prove to everybody all of the time. That's who I am. I will prove anything to anybody. If I sit and say X, I will prove it to anyone. I can be checked anytime. And their ancestors who fought the saber tooth tigers or escaped the, the Mongol hordes or managed to dodge bombs in the Second World War, all the they went through just for this cretin to be born and to look at him look at who he is listen to his life story listen to what he does on a day-to-day -day basis and they would feel nothing but shame your ancestors did all that all that struggling to survive hunting hunting and gathering avoiding enemies anything it took dying at age 30 from a tooth infection all the crap they went through just for you to be born so you could smoke weed and jack off that's what your ancestors died for? That's what they worked so hard for? That's who you are? That's the end of your fucking bloodline? Do you feel no shame? It's fucking shameful. My ancestors will look at me and think everything we went through was fucking worth it. Your ancestors will look at most of these people, their ancestors look at them and feel nothing but fucking disgust. Well, I guarantee even their fucking living relatives, their living parents aren't even proud of them. Like the fuck, your own father's ashamed of you. And you don't even feel fucking motivated to do that. It's a fucking shame. If you were to go and look your father in the eye and said, you know what, I could have been a fucking, I could have been a UFC champion, I could have been a multi-millionaire, I could have been a race car driver, I could have been a nuclear physicist, could have done all these things, but I was busy on, you think he's going to be proud of you? No. No. And, and there's men here who will deny it, right? There's men who will go, no, 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 no. But those are the ones who are most lost. And they should look in the mirror, look deep in their own eyes and say, yes, I'm fucking disgusting, I can change this. That's the beauty about being a man. If you're disgusting, you can change it. That's the beauty. There's nothing stopping you changing it. You're right. And you must accept it. You must accept it first. Most of these people, what they do is they hang around with other disgusting people, and then they're the little group of disgusting people, and they think, well, I'm not disgusting, everyone's disgusting, and this is normal, and it's normal to be a fucking jerk off. Not in my world, it isn't. It's not, it's not, it's not normal to be a fucking jerk off in my world. It's the things, it's the denial that's going to hold you back the most. The people who go, yes, I'm wasting my potential. Those are the ones who have potential. The ones who stand up and go, I am wasting my potential, I could be anything, and I am not that yet. They have a chance. The men who go, well, no, actually, I'm fine. They're They're inside the matrix, fully slave-minded. They're a waste of time. But if you sit there and go, you know what? Yeah, I am wasting my potential. Yes, I can be more than I am. Even if I'm already great, I can be better. As good as I am, I still, I still push myself to the limit every single day. I have every single thing a man could possibly want. I'm still pushing myself. This is your prerogative as a man. You need to be instilled with a sense of duty, duty to your bloodline. You must want it. You need to want it deep inside your soul. I can't die as anything less than emperor. It's, it's my destiny. There are duties that men must fulfill, whether to God or to your bloodline. If I feel extremely happy and excited, I'm going to use that as motivation or energy to do amazing things and do good and work hard. If I feel absolutely depressed and distraught, I'm going to use that as endless energy and motivation to do amazing things and work hard. It doesn't matter what you give me. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can only be converted transferred. and transferred. It doesn't matter what fuel you give me. If you give me diesel, petrol, kerosene, vodka, it doesn't matter what you put inside of my engine. Hard work is going to come out. Absolutely. Success. That's all I know how to do. Making the best move on the chessboard, regardless of how losing your position is, it's a life philosophy that most will never understand. Sometimes you look at your position on the board and you're, but still, regardless of how you are, there's still a best move. There's always a best move and a worse move, no matter how bad things are. Many people, when they get to a losing position, think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, I don't have to make the best move anymore. I actually disagree. Maybe nine times out of 10, the best move won't save you, but that one time out of 10, the best move might be just enough to save your, not a long enough time frame. If you play the game, 
repeatedly day after day taking risks, always making the best move regardless of whether you're winning or losing, it will compound into an upward spiral of never-ending success. You might end up somewhere near me. You might have dinner one day. You might stop being a brokey. You might stop being a loser. If your girl leaves you, the best move on the board perhaps is to go to the gym, perhaps is to send her flowers, perhaps is to never text her again. But you should make the best move on the board regardless. Even if you don't want her back, you should still make the best move. You should always think that way. What move will give me the best possible strategic position? That's how you think. That's how I think. Best move on the board is how you should approach your life. Next time you're in a situation, you should sit and say, okay, this is a bad situation. What's the best move I could possibly make? What's the outcome I would like? What's the most likely move to give me that particular outcome? And you'd be surprised what some of them are. I had a guy email me the other day saying he lost his job. He was the worst salesman. Well, then you deserve to lose your job. That's how sales works. It's, it's fierce. He goes, well, I don't know. What should I do? I said, what's the best move on the board? He goes, well, I really want the sales job up there. I can get good at it. I said, well, then work for free. But do you have another job yet? He said, no. Okay, while you're applying for other jobs, instead of sitting around on your, on your at home, keep working for free for the company for two or three weeks and see if you can turn it around. And he tried that. And he couldn't because he's shit at sales. But the point is, if he would have sat at home doing nothing, it wouldn't have helped him. The best move on the board was to try and prove to his company that he's actually worth something. If he was worth something, in those two or three weeks, he might have turned around and got his job back. He still got to apply for new jobs. He didn't lose anything. That's moving the chessboard. That's how I want you to approach your life, ladies and gentlemen. It's the mental model in which you should apply to scenarios to deduce what is the best possible action. Because if you're always making the best move and very rarely making the worst move, it's pretty hard to lose. It's player versus player out here. The world is about winners and losers and everyone is competing against each other. You are competing against me. I'm competing against you. You're competing against your friend. You, and you're competing against your enemies. You want a dollar, so does everyone else. You want that hot girl, so does everyone else. You want that house, so does everyone else. What's amazing is the things you want, the main reason you want them is because other people want them. So you can show off that you have it and they don't. It is competition. Kind of like the age old adage. If a tiger is chasing 10 people, you don't have to be the fastest. You just have to be faster than the slowest guy. Because he's fucked. So considering that a lot of people are constantly making the wrong moves, if you can just start to make the right moves most of the time, you'll see exactly how easy life can be. I don't even want your energy around me because quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Mm. You can give it, it doesn't matter what it is. If you go to Ikea and buy a flat pack can table and put it in front of a quitter, you will never have a table. He'll look at it and it's long and he'll quit. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have. So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you in, even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. People say, hey, man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. But I'm going to sit here and once again explain to you how different the world is when you have a mind which isn't warped and affected easily by outside influences. You are never going to become a robot. This is nothing to do with not feeling emotions. This is nothing to do with just becoming an empty, emotionless void of a person. That's not what this is. This is about understanding that you're a human being. You're going to feel emotions. This is a beautiful thing and making sure that you use them in the correct way. A, and B, you do not ever let them stop you doing what you're supposed to do. I say to people often, I haven't felt like going to the gym in two years. I'm wearing my gym clothes right now, I just finished training. I haven't felt like training in two years. I, after 10 years of professional fighting, after giving my life to exercise, genuinely, I have not woke up and felt like, oh, I really want to train. I haven't felt that way in a long time. That's why I retired from fighting. But I have still gone and I have still trained regardless of how I feel. So this is one of the tenets, and there's going to be a lot of things you're going to learn, of an iron mindset. It's the ability to not let your feelings affect you and sometimes to do the complete opposite of how you feel. Because you're not going to very often feel like working hard. You're not going to always feel like doing the right thing. You're not always going to be motivated. The idea that you need to be constantly motivated shows how weak your mindset is. I don't need motivation to go to the gym. I cannot want to go with every fiber of my being and I will still be there because I use my cerebral ability, I use my mind and I logically decide what I'm going to do with my day regardless of how I feel, regardless of whether I'm motivated or not. Because that's all life is and that's all the world is. Life is just getting things done, doing the right things, doing the important things, making sure they're done efficiently and thoroughly so that you live the best possible life. It's as simple as that. It's not particularly complicated. I'm not going to be, and I don't want to be one of those guys who's like motivation, inspirational, that I've never been one of them people, 
I don't believe in motivation, inspiration. I don't believe in that crap. I don't believe that you need motivation to get things done. I'm not going to sit here and just talk a whole bunch of motivational things to make you feel good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the things I always did that allowed me to put together the mindset I currently have. So if you look at any story, literally any story with a hero in it, they all have one thing in common. And that thing is that there's always a villain. You cannot have a hero without a villain. It doesn't matter. You can think of any superhero, any comic book, any any book you can think of, any movie, there's always a good guy and there's a bad guy. So for the good guy to exist, there has to be a bad guy. There's no other way for the duality of the universe to continue without this basic tenet. So you want to be the good guy in your story. You want, and in every, I've said this before actually, as a man, life is going to be difficult. It's more difficult than being a woman. It's more difficult than anything else. So it's very easy to see yourself. Life is actually easier as a whole if you see yourself as a hero. Because in every single hero story, the hero suffers. He has a hard time. And if you understand that you're suffering because you're a hero, then the suffering begins to make sense. So you can be sitting here right now and go, my woman doesn't respect me. Uh, I have no money in the bank. This is difficult. I, I'm struggling here. I'm struggling there. You can feel sorry for yourself or you can say, yeah, my woman doesn't respect me. I'm struggling. I can't make money. But you know what? That's because that's I'm a f***ing superhero and my life's going to be hard because I'm a man. And as a hero, it's going to be difficult. These are the tests and the trials and the tribulations I have to go through to become someone. Every single male superhero went through a whole ton of before he became superhero. You've seen the Batman movies. He was, his parents died. He was, he was locked up in jail. All these bad things happen and then they emerge as the hero. And this is done for a reason because it's the reality of life, especially as a man. So right now you have to understand that you're the hero in this movie. And if you're struggling, you're struggling for a very important reason. And how you handle these struggles and how you deal with these struggles are going to decide the kind of person you're going to be afterwards. You're either going to be a superhero or you're going to succumb to them and you're going to fail. So be happy that you're struggling because that's important. It's the first thing. Second thing is, there has to be a villain. Now, most people think their villain is someone else. You see this all the time. The villain's the opposite of the hero. So if you're sitting at home and you haven't got much money and you're, and you're broke and you're pissed off and you're depressed and you look at me and I have four supercars and all these girls and traveling the world, I go everywhere I want, you may think I'm your villain. People look at other people and say, oh, that guy has this, this guy has this, and they become envious. They think that's the villain. That's not true. That's not the case because every single person has different circumstances. There are things you have that I don't have, and there's things I have that you don't have. So I may have had a genetic gift over you, for example, because I'm a, a fantastic kickboxer. But you may have been born more wealthy than me. I was born in a very, very poor family. So I had advantages and disadvantages. You had advantages and disadvantages. So comparing yourself to other people is, is asinine and it's a name because it's not a level fair playing ground. There are some people who are born to millionaire parents who are gorgeous, model, good looking, and have six packs without trying. Some people are lucky like that. That's just how it is. So comparing yourself to these people is not going to help you. Your villain is nobody else. Your villain is someone you're going to create. And you're going to create your villain because he's going to motivate you to be the most powerful hero you can possibly be. So you're going to create your villain. And this is the task for the first week. This is a six-week training course. And over each week, you have a very important task. And the task for this week is to create your villain. To make sure that there was no disadvantages involved, your villain's going to be a clone of you. But what your villain's going to have is he's going to have some things you don't have. And your villain is going to be the person who basically, without requirement for motivation, without requirement, without being, no matter how he feels that day, no matter how stressed he is from work, regardless of what happens to him, your villain is going to be the guy who always does exactly what he wants to do. So your villain is going to be the guy who goes to the gym regardless of how he feels. Your villain is going to be the guy who approaches every beautiful girl he ever sees and says, hey, I, I really think you're beautiful. Goes over to him and talks to them. Your villain is going to be the guy who asks for a raise of work. Your villain is going to be the guy who does everything he wants, regardless of how he feels, regardless if he's not motivated or not, regardless if he's shy to talk to that girl or people are watching or his ankle hurts, he doesn't want to go to the gym, whatever. Or his boss is, he thinks his boss is going to fire him. Your villain is that dude who does anything he wants to do. You have to sit and you have to make a list of all the things. You have to sit there and say, if I did everything I wanted to do, if I were to be the best version of myself possible, what would I do? Okay, well, I'd go to the gym every day. I'd get up at 6 a.m. and I'd go to the gym every day. You'll write that down. My villain is the kind of guy who reads really important books. I'm, I, I say I don't have time, but my enemy, this villain, he reads books. He finds time. He doesn't watch TV ever. He doesn't waste time ever. He doesn't eat junk food. He reads books. Writes it down. You have to make a list. Now, this list at first should be easy for you. But then you're going to get to about seven or eight things and you're going to stop. No, this list needs to be 25 to 30 points long, minimum. This guy you're building, your arch nemesis, you have to write down every single quality about this guy, what he does. He goes to the gym every day, 6 a.m. 
He doesn't watch TV. He doesn't eat junk food. He goes up to beautiful girls, etc., etc., etc. 25 or 30 points long. Because this is going to become your enemy for the next six weeks of training. You want to become a hero, you need someone to battle against. This is who you're battling against. You're battling against a better version of yourself. A version of yourself that doesn't succumb to how he feels, but does what he's supposed to do anyway. So this is who your villain's going to be. And when you're writing down this list, all the qualities your villain has, imagine what this person looks like. You have to put genuine effort into this. You have to imagine what he looks like, imagine how he walks, imagine how he talks, imagine what people think when they see him. Imagine how different you would be if you had been going to the gym every single day for an hour and a half, every single day for the last two, three, four years. Imagine it. Imagine how differently people would look at you. Imagine how differently females would, would treat you if you were jacked like that guy would be. You have to sit and you have to put down all these qualities. And then once the qualities are there, 25 or 30 minimum, then you have to imagine what kind of person this is. You have to imagine what he looks like, what he talks like, what he thinks like. Imagine how he views the world. Because this is who you're going to be battling against. So you have to put genuine effort into constructing this person and understanding this person. The reason I'm saying do this is because this is what motivates me every single day. When I was training for a fight, the reason I'd always go train is because I knew my enemy was training. But when I stopped fighting professionally, I thought, well, I, what enemy do I have? And I realized I had to create my own. So when I don't feel like going, I imagine I've built my own enemy. I won't even list all the things that my enemy has. He has a whole bunch of shit I don't have. And he's a, a, he would be an impossible, nearly impossible person to be. But when I sit and I don't feel like going to the gym, I know my enemy's training because he trained no matter what, regardless of how he feels, regardless if he's pissed off or if there's traffic or it's raining or he's tired, my enemy trains. When I see a girl and she's beautiful but all her friends are there and are afraid to laugh at me, my enemy wouldn't give a f he'd go over there anyway. That's who he is, he's a man. So when I understood who I was truly battling against, then you have two choices. You either rise up to try and take him on or you become a little pussy. You have the choice. Do I want to lose to this man, this man I've created, and I've built, do I want to lose to him or do I want to beat him or compete with him? And you have to make a choice and you sit there and go, well, I know that the person I created in my mind, my, my arch nemesis would go over there and he talked to all the girls. And he'd two of them, let alone one. This is an extremely important facet. And for the next six weeks, we're going to be doing lots of things that are going to revert back to the enemy that you create. So you'd have to put genuine effort into putting together this person. You have to imagine everything about them. From start to finish, you have to imagine standing next to them. If you were standing next to this guy right now with no shirt on, who would girls want to Who would people respect? And the crazy thing about all of this is that this person is you. This person is you. It's just you with a little bit of a different path or a different take on life. It's you who's the person who does whatever he's supposed to do regardless of how he feels. It's you with an iron mind. This is the exact point. The reason creating this enemy is so important and the reason viewing, how he, viewing him and seeing how he sees the world and, and understanding how important and powerful this person is is important is because that person is you. That person is you who does what he's supposed to do without fail. That's all it is. And when you truly, truly put this person together and you truly, truly understand it, and you find out what you could be and you find out what you're battling against, you're going to become far more difficult to demotivate. It's going to be much harder for someone to say to you, don't go to the gym, because you're going to know, well, my, opponent, my enemy, this guy, give him a name, whatever. This dude's going to the gym. That's why he looks how he looks. And that's who I'm being compared to. So I have to go to the gym. Oh yeah, but you know, I'm tired. Well, you don't go then. My training partners want to go, fine, you don't go. I am going. I'm not the guy who's going to let this man beat me. And you have to start comparing yourself to this guy in every single facet. I still do it to this day. I compare my bank balance to this guy's and he's killing me. I compare my body to this guy's, he's killing me. I compare so many things about myself you guys may look at me and go, oh, take millionaire, girls, this, that, that, that. I'm still comparing myself to this person I've created. And I know that I'm losing. And that's what drives me forward. That's why I don't miss the gym. That's how I find a way to make money. That's how I do whatever it takes to succeed because I know who I'm battling against. Most of you guys have no enemy. You have no enemy. Or you have an enemy which is somebody else. You're looking at Justin Bieber or Drake or something. That, that's not going to motivate you. That's pointless. It's not going to help you. Or you have no enemy at all, you have a support structure around you and you have people who say, Oh, you're great just the way you are, you know, you're beautiful just the way you are, and you're sitting there and living in your little comfort zone, little bitch. Put this enemy together from start to finish, and when you truly put this list together, you truly create this person and truly understand that it could be you, it's going to be far more difficult to stop you doing what you need to do in the future. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Mm. You can give a, it doesn't matter what it is, if you go to Ikea and buy a flat pack and table and put it in front of a quitter, you will never have a table. They'll look at it, it's long, they'll quit. 
Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have a, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have So if you're a quitter, I don't even want you even inside my organization. I don't want quitters anywhere near me because you're never going to be successful. Yeah. There's a lot of young men now, young women, that require that discipline. What kind of advice would you give them, practical advice? Yeah, I think that you have to live. There's a lot of practical advice I can give. Yeah. In terms of the religious sense, I would say you need to live like God is always watching. You may have the opportunity to do something bad, or you may have the opportunity to steal some money or snake somebody, but in the end, you're going to pay for that, and the bill will be paid. And I think if you do the right thing, in my experience, if you're a person who does the right thing, firm handshake, is on time, doesn't lie to anybody, does what he's supposed to do, is honest with a good heart, is genuinely polite to everyone he meets. If you are that person, you get very far in life. I have I've yet to meet people who just do all the simple things right, who completely fail at life. But I've met a lot of people who snake or steal some money and they get really rich and they lose it all, or they get rich and end up a gambling addict or depressed or etc. If you want a good society, so then you have to argue and sit and say, do these people want a happy functioning society or do they want something else? I, live, I have to live the exact same life regardless of how I feel. So me, for me, happiness is not a good indicator on how life should be lived. You shouldn't wake up and say, how happy am I today? How does that affect how I act? That's not how I operate. I wake up and say, what must be done? What will allow me to be proud of myself? What will allow me to achieve? And those things will be done regardless of how I feel. And those are how, that's how the most successful people on earth all operate. The most successful people on earth don't only do things because they feel happy about doing them. The whole world doesn't give a fuck if men are happy or not. Nobody cares about men being happy. We talk about women being happy. We want children to be happy. But if you look at a full-grown man on Christmas morning, he's smiling because his wife is smiling. He's smiling because his children are smiling. Nobody even buys him anything. What do they buy the dad? Socks? Nobody cares Damn. about men being happy. So why do you as a man care about you being happy? That's how you're going to fall into these traps. I'm a, very, I'm a very content person. I live a fantastic life. I'm not miserable or depressed. I'm not sad ever. But I don't wake up and go, I want to be happy today. No, sir. I wake up and say, okay, things must be done. And those things will be completed regardless of how I feel. Regardless of how I feel. You can lock me in a dungeon for an unknown amount of time in, a Roma in Romania, and I will still complete as many push-ups as I can possibly do in the dark by myself. What else am I going to do? Sit there and be sad? Happy or sad, push-ups must be done. It's called duty, it's called honor, it's called pride. If you had these things, you would never do dumb shit in the first place. So you have to just understand that God is always watching. He's going to reward you in the end. That's the first thing. And the second thing I will say is that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with and you mm. need to create your reality. I think the biggest problem with young people today is that they don't create their realities heavily enough. The people that they want to spend most time with aren't adding any value to their lives. And then they end up wondering why they don't get it. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why, because God dislikes you because you're fucking lazy. Start to work, start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you become. Wow. God is unhappy with these people. And inside their hearts, they're unhappy. We talk about depression, anxiety, all those things you mentioned really earlier on in this podcast. That comes from self-loathing. You loathe your own weakness. You loathe your own laziness. This is what all of these things are. It's so easy to win if you can control your own mind. It seems that nobody fucking can. If you cannot control your own mind, then you are just a feather in the wind of life because your own mind is the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather. You can't control other people. You can't even control whether your heart stops beating. You might have a heart attack tomorrow. You can't control anything besides what you think. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control, zero influence. You can't control anything. You're just a feather in the wind waiting for life to blow you from happy place to sad place to happy place to sad place, completely hoping on the gods to be fortunate to you because if any genuine discomfort comes your way, you're fucked. It is trained like everything else in life, it is trained. So if you find yourself not appreciating what you have until it's gone, then you must blink and cure your brain. If you find yourself unable to focus or concentrate on tasks, you must blink and cure your brain. If you find yourself unable to go and dedicate yourself to something you don't want to do, you must blink and cure 
your brain. In the world we live in today, it's hyper competitive. And if you want to be the kind of man that has the choice of women to choose a good one, you need to be an excellent man. It's no longer acceptable for you to just be an average Joe or below average. You have to get up and you have to work hard and you have to be smart and interesting and you have to be charismatic and make some money and be in good shape and you have to try very hard. And genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people. Absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you had, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. Those were masculine Wait, men. Life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. And I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult, how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. Look at it. That's how life should be. You should have a duty to your ancestors. I was instilled with a duty for a very long time to honor my ancestors through achievement. And I was told from a very young age that the only thing your ancestors are interested in is achievement. Even to this day, when I do podcasts, people repeatedly talk about my father. If I wasn't successful, he wouldn't be spoken about him. He, walked, he died nine years ago, mm. and he was a good chess player, but no one's really that interested in chess. The reason he lives on is because I'm so monumentally successful that people are interested in my origin story, and he is mentioned. The reason I will live forever is because my son will be so monumentally successful that they'll talk about how he could have been such a perfect specimen of man, how he was raised, and they will mention me. If you give a shit about your ancestry, and if you give a fuck about your family, and you're not a selfish person, and you want them to exist out in the ether for reality, for, for the eternity of reality, it is your duty to be successful. Yeah. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not going to hurt people. He's going to sit and think about his actions very carefully and he's going to be a good man who protects for, and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're going to find a dangerous man. You need to be teaching stoicism. You need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there and cry your eyes out. This is what God wants from us, from all of us. It doesn't matter what the adversary is. It doesn't matter how much you're hurt by it. You need to allow it to motivate you to push harder and, and show your power um, and show your resilience. And I have very much understood that when bad things happen to me, this is a lesson from the universe or from God or from the Creator to, to, to stand up and show who I am and who I can be and to take all of the pain and anguish and disappointment and heartbreak and all of this and turn it into a force I can use for good and to make myself a better person. And I think if you don't approach life this way, that you're always going to struggle. Because life is hard for everybody. It's going to be hard. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. You need to be resilient to it. If you're just any man who's out there in the world today, you need to look at some problems that need solving, either for yourself or for society, and find a way to fix it. And I think that you should just adopt some problems and try and fix them. It doesn't matter what it is. You can just try and fix the litter in your area, or you can try and get a six-pack, or whatever you want. So if you love your family, mm. and you love your last name, and you're proud of yourself, mm. then you have a duty to be massively, monumentally successful to show homage to your ancestors. Mm. I find it amazing there are people out here today who are going to sit and say, oh, I'm sad, I'm too depressed, I don't want to work hard. There, do you understand that only 200 years ago, there were peasants out working a field, starving, mm. surviving the Black Death, surviving the plague, struggling to exist just to reproduce so that 200 years later, you can be the end of their bloodline for you to sit on your ass and do fucking nothing. Like, well, you're a fuck up. You're fucking up your entire bloodline of your entire ancestry. You owe these people things. You must, they went through hell for you to exist. You have a debt, you have a duty to pay. You have to be the best possible version of yourself. And the same to God. God loves people who try. God loves people who work hard. It's amazing if you try your very best all the time, what God will give you. Mm. He'll give it to you, anything you want, mm. if you actually try. Not, not convincing yourself you try, actually try. Mm. There are different things. But, Disappearing mm. from society. It used mm. to be like, I am Andrew, son of Emery. It was all about who you're yes. son of. Mm. Yes, exactly. right? And it's all vanishing mm. now. Yep. But you, you have a legacy you can build. And, and I, I love the fact that when I was growing up, when my dad walked into a chess tournament, people were scared because his name was set and they were mm. fearful of his last name. And now people are fearful of the last name again because of me. And they will be again because of my son. And this is, this is the beauty of life as a man. And 
uh, one of the most terrifying but also gratifying things of, of, of life as a man is that we're all born relatively valueless. I don't think women are born that way. A woman, if she's born, especially if she's attractive, has an innate value. People just want her no matter what. But as a man, if you're not an important man, nobody gives a fuck about you and they're never going to care. So you have to build yourself from the ground up. And that's scary for a lot of people, but it's also a massive opportunity. You can decide if you want to be a famous musician or a nice sensitive poet or a painter or a kickboxing world champion or a businessman. You get to decide on all the different characters in the video game. You can choose who do I want to be? And then if you actually try, actually try, you can become it. Isn't that amazing? You can wake up and go, you know what? I want to be this kind of guy. I knew who I wanted to be. I want to be the dude pulling up in the Lambo, three in the morning, gets out. Everyone's like, who is this big, strong, rich dude? I want to be that man, so I became it. Mm. And, and if you don't want that, if you want to go be a, a, a musician and play guitar and get a bunch of chicks mm. and chill in Bali and smoke weed, whatever, go, you can choose your yeah. character and build it. And there's also some universal constants. Like if you, a lot of people don't have the ability to understand the compounding effect of doing the right thing time after time. Even if you start a new business and you don't know what to do. I guarantee if you're always on time, if you're a builder and you're always on time, take the basic shit, just be on time. Yeah. Over time, you may you may think, oh, I'm just on time, no one notices. Trust me, across 10 years, that's the difference between being a successful builder yeah. and not being a successful builder. Yeah. Just stick to the absolute basics and and do the right thing and do know what you're supposed to do. And this is why I have so little sympathy for people who go, oh, I'm trying to make it and I can't because I think they're lying to me and they're lying to themselves. So I got a lot of emails, a lot of messages, a lot of like, bro, I'm trying my best. And my answer is simply, no, you're not. Mm. I, I really don't think they're trying their best. I Maybe I come across and I seem non-sympathetic, but I'm from a council estate in Luton. I'm now a billionaire. And it's because I actually tried my best. Uh, a lazy person thinks he's working too hard and a successful person thinks he isn't working hard enough. Mm. And we're doing 20 times the work they are. And we're like, oh, I could have done more, I could have done this, oh, I missed that today, can't miss that again. Oh, I should have taken that call, I should have flown there, I should have. That's, you know, we have guilt about it. They don't mm. give a solitary fuck. And even if you pointed it out to them, they'd sit there and go, oh yeah, and they'd make some excuse for it. It's, it's the brutal arrogance of people. It's like, if you're not gonna take any action at all after two hours of being mm. educated, then you're gonna just stay a loser. Yeah, 100%. That's the reality. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. My life is GTA. I don't need to play a game for GTA. If I want a gun, I'll fucking buy it. If I want a car, I'll fucking buy it. I want a bitch, I'll get it. It's me, I am GTA. I find it amazing that people will sit there and spend all their time upgrading that character, making as much money as they can, getting the best guns, getting strong, getting some hoes, meeting important people, getting the best car. They'll do all that in a game, but they won't do it in real life. I, I find that incredible. I don't see why people play the games. They play the games because they're scared of loss, because if you die in the game, you get another chance. If you lose in the game, you get another chance. In life, you get one shot. Damn, that's... But if you get some balls, if you get some balls, that's what life is as a game. That's what life is as a man. This is one big video game. You get to upgrade your character. You're not born with any value. All these women that you just put me on with are born with value. They're pretty already. They're gorgeous already. They're good looking enough. Even if they're a five, someone's going to give a shit they exist because someone wants to fuck them. As a man, if you don't make yourself valuable, you have no value. You have to get up and do it. Just like a video game, you start with fucking zero. You have to decide if you want to complete it. You have to upgrade your character. So I find it amazing that men are going to play video games and fuck about and waste their time instead of upgrading their character. Everyone knows what to do. You know what you have to do. You're right. If you had to become the most dangerous, intelligent, respectable man on the planet, you know you're supposed to go to the gym. You know you're supposed to train, learn how to fight. You know you know all these things. You don't do them. That's your that's your decision. It's your prerogative. I didn't I didn't make that choice. I made the choice to do it all. I decided all. And every single man watching this can do the exact same thing. I can't stand quitters. So if you're the kind of person who's going to quit because it's hard, I don't even want your energy around me because quitters are the worst people on the planet. You can give a quitter absolutely everything and they will still fail. Quitters can have every single advantage. Quitters can have all the information. Quitters can have all the tutelage. Quitters can have uh, a mentorship. Quitters can have someone who messages them every morning. Hey, bro, let's get it. And guess what they're going to do at the end? Quit. Quit. <laughs> they ain't never going to have shit, right? You need the people who don't quit. I don't quit. I suffered when you didn't. So you're not my equal because you decided not to suffer. You have enjoyed comfort when I haven't, and that's fine, but don't expect me to look at you as my equal, because you're not, I'll snap your fucking neck. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, everyone agrees. They go, yeah, that's probably true. People, the five people you spend the most time with, that's what you're gonna end up like. They say, yeah, that's true. And then they continue to hang around with people who they don't wanna be. Why? You have, there has to be a point 
There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, etc., etc. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I'm on a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. You wouldn't want to be, if you were to come hang out with me, and you were in a room with me and my five friends, you'd feel, you'd feel self-conscious. I'm with killers. We're fucking monsters. If you were to come hang around with me and my crew, you would be self-conscious. And that self-consciousness would motivate you, or they would certainly instill the discipline required for you to change. You don't feel self-conscious amongst your peers. That's why you don't change. The people who come along and talk about passive income, they sound like quitters. There's a lot of people who don't want to. You have to just work. At some point, you have to bite the bullet and just work. So when someone comes to me talking about passive income, they're a broke here, but you are just lazy. You are lazy. You'll never get anywhere. Lazy people never get anywhere in life. Doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's tennis or money. If you're lazy, you never get anywhere. If we were still in the animal kingdom, the lions that you would see on TV, they weren't just born big lions. They had to fight other lions. They had to fight to get that antelope. They had to fight other animals, hyenas, jackals. They had to fight to be the boss. We live in a comfortable world now where people think, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But you know what? To some degree, it does matter. It does matter, and I'm gonna tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul, and it matters to God. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man, and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why, because God dislikes you, because you're fucking lazy. Start to work, start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you'll become. Lessons and trauma, and the more you go through, the better of a man you are. And if you were to find the best men on the planet, I guarantee they've been through a bunch of terrible things. The only way you learn lessons in life are the hard way or the harder way. I try and say to men overall that life as a man is pretty shit, and you're gonna feel shit for a pretty large percentage of the time. But you're only gonna ever escape that if you just perform regardless. You have to perform when you feel bad. As a man, you can't say, I will perform when I feel good. It doesn't work that way because our heads are too complicated and life's too complicated. There's too much on our shoulders and we have too much stress and too much pressure. Our heads are fucked. You have to be the kind of person who says, I perform regardless. I think follow your passion is also a terrible, terrible piece of advice. People say, hey man, you need to find your, what you're passionate about and do that. And what they're trying to say is only do what you like because you have no motivation to do anything else. And motivation in, in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in this. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do. I don't wake up full of like joy. I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or I deal with crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. Yeah. You're never going to be permanently motivated. So when someone comes along and says, oh, do what you're passionate about, what they're saying is you'll have endless motivation and you'll be able to try hard. If you're the kind of person who can only try hard at something he enjoys, then you're going to fail. Because most things you enjoy don't pay any money. If they paid money, you wouldn't enjoy it. It's called a job, right? Nobody likes their job. You like your hobby. I'm sure you like playing video games. Maybe 1%, 0.1% can make money from video games, right? Most people, you ain't ever going to make it. Yeah. Do you think the guy in China who owns a concrete plant is passionate about concrete? It's money. Be passionate about success. If you're passionate about money, then you can be passionate about anything. I'll be passionate about any business on earth that pays me. If you pay me a billion dollars to dig that hole, I'll be very passionate about that hole. I will dig that hole with passion. All of your minds are broken. You can't even focus on anything anymore. You're right. You are completely distracted to the point where you can't even appreciate the good things in your life. You're distracted. Your minds are broken. You need to rewire your mind and resist the slave programming. You must allow yourself to be manipulated and you must fix it. All of it. You just talked about not appreciating the things you have then blink and cure your brain. It's not difficult, there's just no competition because everybody's fucking distracted. They're getting distracted by this, distracted by that, watching fucking Netflix jerking off to Pornhub like fucking jackasses. It's so easy to win if you can control your own mind. It seems that nobody fucking can. And that's how the people who run the world keep the world running because they have all the slaves exactly where they need them to be, permanently distracted and semi-depressed working their asses off in jobs which will never satisfy them and never pay enough money. That's the matrix. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not finish. I've literally never seen it. The universe is extremely giving. If you actually try, and you actually want it, and you're actually not making excuses, lying, talking shit, you're gonna get what you want. I've, I've always been a believer in the struggles men have in their minds, and I've always spoke about it, and I've suffered with them myself. And this is one of the things when I say like depression isn't real. People say, oh, you don't understand. Let me, let me counter that argument by saying, 
I understand very well. Me convincing myself and me deciding that depression isn't real is how I prevent myself from ever feeling depressed. And I can o I've can only constructed that mental model because I've been in situations in my life where I felt depressed. I'm not saying depression isn't real because I've never felt depressed. I'm saying depression isn't real because I've been very depressed. The people don't understand where my mindset comes from. I understand struggle and mental health and all these things. And yeah, jail was another chance to certainly touch on me because in jail, you can, in, sorry, in real life, when you have my kind of resource, you can distract yourself very easily. If you're sitting around and feel a bit mopey, if I'm sitting here and I'm a bit like, oh, I can literally make a phone call and in 45 minutes be in the air on my way to anywhere on the planet with whoever I want to do anything I want. So you can distract yourself. I'm not saying it fixes all mental health, but it distracts you. Whereas in jail, you are stuck alone with your thoughts. And it was certainly a test of my mental resolve. And I would say that I passed. I, I did well. I, 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 there was never a day where I broke down. There was never a day where I couldn't handle it. There was never a day where I was, you know, I wasn't polite to the staff. I was very nice to everybody. There was never a day I couldn't hack it. It was certainly a test. And also, you know, Tristan said this. I don't want to take his words, but he's true. You go through life telling everyone you're the baddest motherfucker there is. Sooner or later, something's going to test you. You walk in the pub and you say, I'm the hardest man there is. Sooner or later, someone's going to fight you. Sooner or later. And life's like that. You want to be the top G and you want to go through life and say, I'm the top G. Then God's going to say, well, we're going to see if you deserve to call yourself the top G or not. We're going to put you in a remaining jail cell. We're going to leave you there to rot. You're not going to know how long you're in there for. And the biggest mind fuck is I thought I was going to be in there for years. I didn't. I had no idea. Everyone's telling me years, years, years. I thought I was going to be in there for years. So maybe God was just seeing, he was watching me and he was having a look and saying, you want to call yourself top G, let's see. And I like to think I passed that test. So it is what it is. But yeah, I agree with you. In terms of mental struggles, yeah, they exist for all men. And I also think that's one of the reasons I'm so large. I talk about those things a lot. I talk about those things a lot with men and I help men with them. And I try and say to men overall that life as a man is pretty shit. And you're going to feel shit for a pretty large percentage of the time. But you're only going to ever escape that if you just perform regardless. You have to perform when you feel bad. As a man, you can't say, I will perform when I feel good. It doesn't work that way because our heads are too complicated and life's too complicated. There's too much on our shoulders and we have too much stress and too much pressure. Our heads are fucked. You have to be the kind of person who says, I perform regardless. I didn't miss a single day's training. I didn't miss a please. I didn't miss a thank you. I'm not saying I was happy. I'm saying I did exactly what I was supposed to do. The worst thing about prison, I think for everybody else, because there was a lot of men in there who were crying, a lot of men who were having mental breakdowns. I think it is problem I didn't have, which is knowing that if you're a normal man, you go to jail, and they just pick you up and go to jail. Who pays the rent? Who's feeding the kids? Who's your wife sleeping? Like, like, it, life gets hard for all the external things you can no longer control, things that were your responsibility. I was lucky I didn't have those problems. And when I spoke to people, most people's issues were things that were happening on the outside. I felt really good knowing that my life is set up in a way where even if I'm plucked from it, it operates. And I set that up because I thought they were going to kill me. Even to this day, they shoot me right now. Everyone around, everything would be okay. I don't have to exist for my life to fall. So that was fantastic about jail. The worst thing about jail, I mean, the cockroaches started off really bad, but after a few days, it's amazing how cool it was. The cockroaches just in your bed. <laughs> you just like, kick them out of the way. That was kind of bad. But um, not knowing when I'm going to get out, that was bad. Having my name slandered all around the world, that was bad. Not knowing how people are reacting to it. Like the, my first time, month in jail, I didn't know if people believed this garbage or not. I, I had no access to the internet. I didn't see anything. There was a lot about it that was hard, but um, I have to believe this would make me a better person. Why else would I, why else did I go? What did I go for? To waste three months? To stare at a wall for three months? Is that why I went to jail? No, I must've gone to jail to become a better person. I must've learned something. I have to self-analyze and find the lessons and pick it out. And I think a lot of people don't do that with all the bad situations in their life. And regardless of whether you went to jail or a woman left you or your business failed, whatever it is, you need to analyze the entire situation and say, okay, what can I learn? There's a, there's a big pile of shit here, but there must be a little bit of gold inside. So I've just tried to look at it as a massive learning experience. And perhaps that's a coping mechanism, but I've found a lot of lessons which I'm implementing. And, uh, and there's a very strong chance they're going to put me back. Not because I'm guilty because I haven't done anything wrong, but because I'm currently in the middle of a, a, a judicial system. I'm in, in, I'm in the judicial system of a country. I don't truly understand the language. I don't understand the judicial system. I don't understand the charges against me. I don't understand how any of this can be legal. I don't understand how where it's come from. I don't understand the evidence they believe they have. And here I am stuck in this process. And who knows how it's going to end? Mindset is your key to everything. Absolutely everything. Join the top G's on Patreon.